What's up guys, Chip Waters here, and I've got something really exciting to talk about today. It's a product I've been working on with Master Xeon 1001, aka Jerry Perkins, and here's his art station. You can see he's a very talented, incredibly gifted 3D modeler who I've been working with over the past year. Something else about Jerry is that he created this amazing new Boolean workflow using products like Box Cutter and Hard Ops. Definitely some pretty cool products to look at. The other guy is a fantastic Blender programmer who goes by the handle Proxy, and he has created some of the top Blender add-ons existing out there. So we've been working on this plugin for about three months or so, and I'd like to give you a quick preview of some of the cool things it does. This plugin is called Kit Ops, and it's a tool that allows you to very quickly add different objects to create some pretty interesting things. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's take a quick look at this. Kit Ops is installed in the tool shelf. We have at the very top something called KPAX. Basically just a bunch of folders with special dot blend files. Each one of these we call a KPAX. And right now we're using KPAX to create high tech objects. KPAX could be used for just about anything else. It can be used for architectural inserts. You could cut windows and doors. There could be KPAX for different kinds of controls, buttons, displays. There could be KPAX built for woodworking, screws, nails, hinges, and those kinds of things. Okay, let's show how KPAX and the inserts work. Over here is a list of our KPAX. If you notice, there's a little button to the right. If you click on it, you'll get a list of all the inserts that are in that KPAX. So you can click on one, we'll click on this one, we'll drag it right here. And as you can see, whatever face that we're dragging it onto, it will align itself perfectly too. So I'll set it over here and I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna say, let's make it centered on both axes. And then I'll use the standard scale tools. I hit the S key and now I'm scaling it. And as you can see, as I scale it, I'm actually modifying the shape quite a bit and I can move it up and down uh, I can scale it in and out if I want on either direction. So anyway, it's pretty uh, pretty easy. And then we can start again and we can just go and add another one. We'll go to add. Let's put this here and we will center it. Y axis. There we go. Now that it's centered, I can actually say, let's go ahead and mirror it on the X axis. And you'll see it's over here. Let's select our box again, and this time we'll go into Objects Tech, and we'll grab a different kind, maybe this advanced latch, and we'll stick it over here on the side, and we'll go back and we'll center it, and we'll center it, and hit the S key, and scale it in, and there we have it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what this might look like rendered. So you can see we're already starting to build something pretty nice. Let's look at another couple neat features. I'm gonna go in and grab another simple cutter and let's grab this cube. And I'm gonna scroll the mouse wheel now and make it smaller. And once I've got it right here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shift D on my keyboard and move it out. And I know if I hit the Y key, I'll go right about right there. And then if I shift R, I can add more of them. And let's do Another one, let's grab this little small cube right here. Now, notice that we're in this mode, this little orange line around here. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna take this cube, I'm gonna make it a little bigger. And while I'm here, I'm gonna hold the shift key down, I'm gonna click, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just click all over this place. Notice I'm getting it on angles. I can click anywhere where I click, I'm gonna be adding, and I can scroll the mouse as I, as I move if I want, make it bigger. And then once I'm done, hit the escape key and, and we're out. And as you can see, this is a really fast way of creating quick concept models. So one thing we need to talk about is that this is a non-destructive workflow. And what do I mean by non-destructive? Let's go ahead and turn on these cutters. These are all modifiers. If I click on this object and I click over here on the modifier stack, you'll see these are all modifiers. And because of that, it means that we can actually go in at any time we want. Like for instance, if you can see this, let's, let's Let's kind of hide these again. You can see that we have this little ridge here. Well, we might want to make that grow a little bigger. And I'll just go in, select that particular insert, and I'm just going to grow it. I'm going to hit the S key, and I'll grow it a little bit and turn off the cutters. And you see that we have it. We've gotten rid of that. So we can do that. We can actually go in. We can actually go in and, and select some of these other modifiers that we may or may not want. 
and we can hit delete get rid of them if we want we can adjust just about any any part of this we want move it down you get the idea so the whole point of this is that you can at any time go back in and tweak your design and of course once you're done you can always apply all the modifiers and create one solid mesh with regard to the non-destructive workflow let's look at it this way I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna select all of the inserts that I've got and I'm gonna basically expand them off so now you can see that what I started with is just in this particular case is just a plain <laughs> it's just a plain cube that's it I got over here all of these different modifiers but it's just a plain cube and I can undo and get it all back and there we have it so we'll go back to layer one and look at this particular object it's one of the ones that we animated at the beginning of this video and let's talk a little bit about some of these other features here in particular these four buttons right here this first thing if you look at some of these objects they'll have what we call an AP plane or a placement plane and by t tapping the W it'll turn off those AP planes it'll, they usually have that, an X on them you can see them right here so that'll turn that off you turn that off uh, you can also turn off the cutter plane so now you can actually see what it looks like what things look like unless they're selected you can also turn off any of the solid objects that were added so now you see this is just the basic cube as it was cut out if you want you can even turn off all the modifiers and here's the cube that we started with so if I turn the modifiers back on and the solids you can see that's what we that's what we ended up creating very quickly again here's the cutters and the wires and for something really cool check this out select everything in here I'll copy the selection to buffer now I go over to blender 2.8 and I paste it in here deselect it and look at that everything with the modifiers and everything just comes straight in and I can select the camera and I can move around the scene how neat is that now of course we don't have kit ops ready for 2.8 we're going to work on it as soon as they lock down the api now you can use kit ops with 2.8 by just copying and pasting your objects over one more thing to show you about kit ops as we zoom in on this here are those fan blades and these fans were inserted as animation objects in kit ops so you can create objects that are already ready to animate now watch when i scroll through the animation you can see the actual blades are moving so when you insert an animated object, it'll automatically animate. Let's take a look at something else here, and that is how we create these inserts. So I've got this, it's a keyboard numpad. I'm gonna drop it to the top of this here, and I'm gonna hit the S key, and I'm gonna scale it down, and I'm gonna zoom all the way into it, and I want you to be able to look at it, and you can see this is the cutter, and it's what is used to Boolean cut the hole for the keypad of the object. If I uncheck the auto select insert, I can now go in and actually select some of the individual objects inside, as you can see, in locomode these are these are the actual keys so let's take a look at this object in the author mode when you open an insert kit ops automatically recognizes that it's an insert and puts you in factory mode and the factory mode is a different interface as you can see over here basically what we could do is we can identify what each of these objects is and how it relates to the parent or the target object in kit ops okay so this is it here we have a solid but if we want it to be a cutter, we can make it a cutter. We can make it a difference or a union cutter. This is actually going to be the main object. So we always make the cutter the main object. And you can also hit the render thumbnail button. And they look something like this. You can see these are, these are different thumbnails over here. So that's the quick preview for Kit Ops. We are very close to releasing the product. And we hope that you'll take a look at it. Thanks for watching. Bye.